All right, here we are, another episode of Canada on the Rocks. I am your host, Fadi Kudir, and in this show, we're going to talk about everything that's related to Ottawa, businesses, and bring sort of awareness to this fantastic city that we live in. And today, we are joined by Joanna Abuzena, who is from Runaway Picnic, which is one of those exciting businesses that I've been hearing about lately. I'd like to kind of bring her on the show and just kind of get a gist of what your business is all about, Joanna. First off, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for having me. Tell me a little bit more about the idea of Runaway Picnic. What is that all about? So Runaway Picnic is about you running away from life's worries. Mm -hmm. So Don't we all need that? Yes, of course. Especially with the hectic work lifestyle that we're in. And uh, when I started Runaway Picnic, I started it during the pandemic, during the height mm -hmm. of lockdown. Very well. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, so I really needed a runaway. And I noticed that the people in Ottawa as well wanted some kind of an escape, especially with the travels being banned and, you know, you were stuck from home. Mm -hmm. So the idea was to run away from life's worries, get somewhere cool, find uh, nature and have a nice experience with your loved ones in a picnic format. But this time it's not just like a regular picnic. It's more like an elevated luxury style picnic. Wow. So yeah. Describe it to the audience because it's, it's something that like, you know, unless you're seeing it on Instagram or seeing photos, it, it really doesn't do it justice. No. So maybe we can try to describe like one of one of the most elaborated one that you've done lately. Oh, so every client has a different type of experience. Depends on what they want. But we do get a lot of clients who want to do anniversaries mm -hmm. or uh, date nights and birthdays as well. Proposals. And proposals. I saw that last one. Yeah. Oh, that was really <laughs> exciting. I was like... Wow, this guy just went really all out on it. We have so much more stuff that we haven't posted about yet. So, uh, like, in terms of if you've never been to a runaway picnic experience, the idea is you will come with the expectation that you're the guest even if you book the experience. Mm -hmm. So you'll have, like, a luxury picnic table, you'll have decorations, you'll have fresh flowers. Like, the sky is the limit because you can have candles, rose petals, Roses coming from the sky, like if it's in an indoor setting, we can suspend roses and it's like just completely romantic. Wow. I've had a guy who wanted to surprise his wife for her birthday and he just bought a house and it was her first birthday in this house. And what he did, it, so it was like almost empty and I had to design the whole space with my team and create a romantic experience. Right in the heart of their home. Right in the heart of the home, oh. yes. Yeah, so the whole living room space it had the picnic table, roses cascading from the ceiling, balloons, and everything. And he bought some jewelry. So we had like a, a section where the jewelry was displayed as well as her gift, but in a very elegant way. So it really depends on the client because we can go all the way extravagant or we can keep it simple and elegant at the same time. So what have you thinking of this idea? I mean, like obviously the pandemic was, it gave a lot of people sort of like time on their hand, right? Mm -hmm. But what had you really going into that route and thinking of that idea and putting it in place? So I'm an interior designer and I've been, so it has, it came from like a personal experience. So I'm an interior designer. I was working on one of the big projects in the city and it was taking a lot of my time and energy. Sometimes I was working until 2 a.m. just to finish a project. And I felt extremely stressed and my mental health was down because of the extreme workload. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to just, get out of this, you know, the whole lockdown period that I was in and just get out of the town for a bit because I couldn't travel outside of the country. So I just booked a resort. Actually, it's like an Airbnb. And uh, there was a picnic table at the facility. And I decided, you know what, let's just uh, decorate it. I've never had a picnic before. Usually I'm the one who comes to an event and I enjoy the event. I don't design it. I design spaces, but not events. Mm -hmm. And I took my family with me. I decided to just decorate with a few things. Something simple, really, nothing much. And I was also missing the wedding season. So the idea of like, I wanted something extravagant yeah. was there. And I did it. I liked it. I had uh, fun with my brothers. We did like morning breakfast. We did lunch and dinner, different setups. And uh, throughout the year, this was still while I was working as an interior designer, which I still do. But I did this like on the fun uh, weekends or whenever I had time just so that I could vent out and experience nature in a fun way. And people would see this uh, throughout the year when I was doing it with, with my friends or family. And they would be like, you know what? I would like to hire this as a service. I'd like someone to help me do this for a proposal or a date night. Or even if I would just want to get 
with my family. Just get out of the house, yeah. Especially like yeah. the lockdown was just insane for a lot of people. Like it, it took a huge toll on mental health in general. Mm. And in fact, I, I really like the fact that you brought up the whole wedding season. We missed the wedding season. I was watching something actually the other day and then this bride uh, was just having a most recent wedding. Like now, it's no pandemic anymore. But And she had basically invited all of her friends that had weddings during the pandemic. Okay. to join her for the first dance. And I thought that was very, very heartwarming. Like just to, because they haven't had that experience. Right? It's like very just, thoughtful. It was really not the best of, of time for those people. So I'm glad that you kind of turned something that's negative, which we all experienced all together. And you kind of brought up something beautiful like that. So with that being said, how often do you get, you know, venues or, uh, you know, people booking you and things like that? How how busy is the, the business? We get booked very quickly. I just had a client yesterday who was booking for June. So oh people book in advance. So if I want to book something for, you know, in a couple of weeks, we all sometimes, know what's happening. It's, it's sometimes it could, it could work, you know, like sometimes I do accept last minute clients. It depends on the schedule and the capacity. In our first year, I tried to like accommodate everyone and it was just too much mm -hmm. <laughs> because uh, at some points I had three different events in one day and it was just taking a toll on me and the team. So we're trying to make sure that we can cater to everyone, but maintaining the quality as well, because there's a lot of work that goes into preparing the picnic setup. It's not just, uh, you know, you have a picnic table, you have the decorations, you have the food, you have the fresh flowers, the balloons. So there's a lot of vendors that you work with, even entertainment, photography. Yeah. So there's a lot of coordination. It's an event planning, basically. But the event planning is not in the scale of like, let's do 100, 200 people. It's just two people, but obviously... It's actually more than two people. Yeah. depends. So I've done picnics for 60 people as well. Oh, wow. Yeah. And this was during a thunderstorm, too. <laughs> and, and it still went on? Everything was fine? It went successful. We had some hiccups with the client because she insisted on having it on that day. And she wanted it outdoors as well. But we figured out a way to make it successful. And thankfully, everything went uh, fine. So what goes into planning something like this as far as, you know, steps into planning or, you know, just kind of the different vendors that you work with? Tell me a little bit more. So when someone wants to work with us, they can just take a look at our website so that they can have an idea of the packages that we offer. Mm -hmm. So our packages are based on number of people and it's basically a picnic for two or a group picnic. And it's for anyone. So if you want to do a date night proposal or if you want to do a birthday, family gathering, celebrations, even for workplace. So I've had some offices and um, companies, they wanted to do like team bonding events or office retreats. Mm -hmm. So I've done that too. So they could tell us like, what are they looking for? Like a picnic experience indoors or outdoors. If they want to have a venue that's booked, they book it and then we come in as the event planner. So we create the whole ambience for them. And we work with vendors. So like for catering, we work with restaurants. So like custom desserts, custom food. We do a watermelon cake, for example. This is our signature um, food. Mm -hmm. well, we also do charcuterie boards. And for entertainment, we do like violin, bands, you name it. Like anything you can think of, we can do it. Almost anything. Have you had any sort of weird requests lately that you're like, no, we're not doing this? I actually did. I had someone who wanted to do a picnic in a cemetery. Ooh, that's and, a little ominous thing. Yeah, and I found it to be interesting because like who would want to have a picnic in a cemetery? But then I understood the story. It was their anniversary of their daughter that was buried. Uh, and they wanted to have her spirit with them during the anniversary. So that was the most unique type of request. But I had some interesting requests as well. I had one client who wanted to book a birthday surprise for her mother-in-law. And uh, she came out of the wars, the world wars, and she lost her granddaughter. Uh, from cancer so like she never she was never really happy after those incidents and she wanted to uh, bring some smile to her face mm -hmm. so we brought a picnic inside an area that had like architectural ruins and we created a whole nice detail of the event and she came with her husband and the kids you don't like if you see her reaction to me, this is like one of the most emotional picnics I've ever done because the amount of emotional value that was integrated in that event. Till now, they still call and thank me for the amount of care that was given to them and the details. Like you know, there was a picture of the dot of the granddaughter and uh, the moments, the journey. Even her husband, he was like, how did you bring this picnic into the spot? Like, did it come from the sky? Because it was a, quite a hike to get mm -hmm. there. 
And for us, like we try to create moments that live with you forever. It's not just about a rental because our business is not about rental. It's yeah. about creating memories and experiences. And there's something to be said about like, you know, when, when people start to reminisce and then remember things, they don't really remember details. No. What they remember mostly is how they felt. That's right. And that's, I think that's what you guys are kind of harnessing is like that power of the feeling that you bring to that event or the feeling that you bring to the picnic, if you will, and making people feel just emotional, regardless special. of what kind of emotion. Yeah, we want people to feel special and valued. Even if you're booking the event, we want you to also feel like a guest. Mm -hmm. The element of surprise and care is very important for us. So even, for example, like if the husband or the wife or whichever person has taken upon themselves doing the, the event planning or like reaching out to you guys, mm -hmm. they still feel like they're surprised themselves yes. as well too because they'll give you kind of the idea and then they leave it with you and you take care of it. Yeah. From the sounds of it, it sounds like you kind of figured out a place where you kind of excel. You, mm -hmm. you flourish, like you're, you're sort of the whole background and interior design and the love that you bring into the event just kind of makes it where it's, where it's supposed to be. How does that make you feel as, as a business owner? I love it. To me, this is what keeps me going, just seeing people's reactions and the amount of gratitude and joy. Like you're touching people's lives, even though it's just a luxury picnic service mm -hmm. or event planning, uh, because we've also done weddings. But uh, the amount of joy that you see from like helping people and impacting them. So when I do interior design, I don't really see the turnaround of my projects until, let's say, a few months or years. And maybe the stakeholders or the users change over the time until Correct. you get that building done. But with Runaway Picnic, it could take a few weeks, months or hours, depending on like when the, when the client books and if you have availability. But we get to see their reaction. We stick around. So we always hand over the picnic to them in person because, you know, we want to make sure our picnic is not taken by someone else or there's no damage. We take care of it. So we film their reactions when they come and we get to see how they experience it genuinely. And because they don't know what they're receiving, this is like our philosophy. You tell us, okay, what are your needs? Like how many people, what kind of area do you want? Or if you want us to do everything for you. And if you want food, whatever services you want, like vague ideas. And they book and we text them lo the location. So it's a surprise picnic if it's outdoors, as if it's a scavenger hunt. Mm -hmm. And they just show up. And for them, because they have no expectation of what they're receiving, except a general idea, for them, it's like, wow, like, what is this? I did not expect this. But it's very heartwarming to see the reactions and the fruit of your labor. So it's really like at the end of the day, like if I am planning something like this for my loved one or whichever, it, it sounds like I'm also getting the reward out of it as well too. Yes. So it's not really, like it's, it's kind of like in a way, kind of like, okay, I'm going to maybe make dinner for my, my loved one or my, my kids or whatever. It's just not the same because it's sure you're getting the joy out of it, but you're also doing the work. But this sounds like it's all taken care of by you You're guys. the guest. That's it. Literally, you're the guest. You're, you know, you just show up kind of thing. Having said that, you, you know, you've done a lot of different kind of venues. What are, what's sort of some of the venues that stick out for you that, you know, you're still going to remember them for quite some time. For venues, I honestly prefer outdoors. This is something I like because, you know, we want you to get out of the whole interior environment and just experience nature, see the beauty of Ottawa. So our work is more like business in terms of like tourism, event planning and like everything service related. But we want you to see the beauty of Ottawa. So for me, in terms of locations, I really like anything that deals with the Ottawa River. Mm hmm so my locations are secret that I can't disclose them. I'm going to ask you to. No, 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 don't. Because then you, you take that sort of allure that comes with, with yeah. the event, right? Like we don't want to do that. What we want to yeah. do is highlight the fact that there are some special events yeah. that you can, you know, reserve for loved ones out there that yeah. potentially are looking into booking with you. Of course, you'll be my guest, obviously. We've also done picnics in front of the parliament. So that's a nice background to look at as well. Is there certain situations where like you'd had to go, for example, you mentioned with the parliament that you might have to go to the city and get like a permit or something like that? Or is that something that you... So we've had some, when I first started Runaway Picnic, I had the city contact me regarding the business idea because I was the first one to launch it and it was completely unheard of. And there were, there were questions from the city about this business. So many people wanted to like know what's going on 
and uh, some people wanted to like break the business before it started but uh, the thing is if bureaucracy you... of course <laughs> <laughs> so it was, yeah it was difficult like you're launching something the city have never seen before so there's no baseline to compare and you're trying to figure it out usually when you're doing an event planning you have a venue that's already booked and you're doing it in a private yeah. area uh, and you're sort of kind of repeating a business that's already been there but this sure. sounds like it's uh, something special something new it's a pop up yeah. yeah so for me I had some issues with that but but obviously, we resolve them quickly because we're not really renting the space. We're not doing sales and business. We're basically providing you tools to like enjoy your your picnic. They're booking us. We're putting the stuff for them to enjoy. And then we're picking it up and cleaning after. So for us, we're not really doing any damage to the properties. And if there's an area that needs uh, permission or permits, we definitely work with the client to get that mm -hmm. sorted out. So any permits, it's by the client's responsibility. We don't deal with uh, permits just because too much work and uh, it's better if the client deals with the venue location in terms of like any permits. Yeah. And then we come and do our work. And what when you're looking at uh, 2024 and, you know, beyond, what are so, so, sort of like the plans for Runaway Picnic for the next few years? I think we want to grow big. We want to like we started very intimate events and I still want to keep that element going on because it's a specialty. It's a niche. And I still think there's a lot of hunger for it. Yeah. And uh, but for us, we also want to like delve into weddings and doing corporate stuff as well, like bigger retreats and have yeah. more interesting, fun elements. To our I really liked how you touched on the uh, like the intimate aspect of it because I find like especially in this day and age, we tend to and you know we're all guilty of it. We get into a relationship and what have you, and then we just kind of stop the whole dating scene. Like you have to continue dating your partner no matter what. That's a good point. Yes. Dating is so important. Like I've had clients who've been married for like 25, 35, 45 years and they still come to me. Like I have a demographic of everyone. Mm -hmm. So like I have teenagers, like let's say late teens, um, all the way to seniors. Nothing stops them, which is amazing. So, but like, as you said, like with time, the whole romance fades or it gets boring. And this is where you can spice it up a little bit. I've had clients come to me for several events. And every time you book an experience, it's different. It's never the same. It's interesting because like the biggest thing with dating nowadays is just that whole sense of like the boredom, right? Like mm -hmm. we get bored of each other kind of thing. And then, you know, the whole, okay, well, we're going to start something new. So I think this kind of brings a spark back into it. it and it Absolutely. shows the partner, whichever partner that's doing the work or doing the booking, it shows the other partner that commitment. That renewed commitment, if you will. And I like that. I like that, that you guys are going to still continue to focus on that and expand, obviously. Yeah. With the corporate side of it, like what sort of, you know, what are you thinking? Like what sort of events would you want to throw? What, like, what would be the ideal for you guys from a, you know, business planning perspective? I think we want to create fun events for corporates. So I worked in the corporate field and I can tell you for sure, it gets boring. Yep. All of those social events, no one really wants to be part of. No, nobody <laughs> wants to be like a, you know, they all have their own cooler, you know, like a cooler talk and all of that. But I think it, it, there's something to be said about getting people kind of involved. Yes. So we've had like events where we could do, where we had like yoga. So I had realtors come to me and we did like a yoga event with a picnic. Some people also wanted to do like canoe. So after they do like an activity, they come back to the picnic to eat. Then there's like another activity afterwards, so to engage with others. So I think for me as a business owner, I want to bring relationship bonding between others, especially with uh, different categories. So I want people who are dating to like reinvent the, the love for each other again. People who like have families, they can strengthen the bonds with their family members. Mm -hmm. This is how Runaway started, like strengthening family members and bonds. And also in the workplace, how can you break the ice, have deeper relationships with your coworkers, have fun, see the humanity of the other person instead of just bureaucracy in the paperwork. So I think there's a lot of room for us to grow and we're excited about just having more activities, you know, being creative, being more outdoors and showing that, you know, being outdoors is fun. You don't need to be at home once uh, you're done with work. Yeah. It tends to be like we're supposed to be, like as, as people, we're supposed to be outdoors 90% of the time. But from the sounds of it for the last, you know, I want to say like 
20 years or so like it's just that that sense of like now i'm just gonna stay inside we're down to like almost like maybe five percent being outside and especially in the winter it's, it's just horrible yeah so i think just bringing that aspect and like allowing people to you know experience being out a little bit more and then bringing fun to it makes it even a thousand times better right like just being outside and enjoying the company of one another and uh, something that you touched on with the corporate world, like I find a lot of the times the relationships that get made or bonds that get created outside of work tend to flourish a lot more inside of work yeah. and bring a lot more value. And like anytime there's a team building activity, I find when you come back, it's like all of a sudden it's just massive growth for the company. So a lot of companies need to just really, you know, decide on and kind of focus on that for, for their growth, not just for... Like even if they're looking at it from a you know selfish standpoint, which is the growth of the company, it works to be fantastic for everybody because then it's a win-win-win in a way. Absolutely, for sure. Like when you see the other person as you and you stop seeing the seniority versus junior level hierarchy, you know, because yeah. in the corporate world you have that thing going on, you start to see, oh, this person is like me. There's so many cool things about this person and we can be friends, yeah. not just, you know, Hi, hello, and do the work and go home. Well, that's the thing. Like as creatures, we we have this thing where like we're we're always guarded. We always have that guard up for everyone that we meet. And I find the second that you start kind of becoming a little bit more vulnerable, and and really the only way you can become vulnerable is by changing the settings, and then allowing for you as a person to be relaxed in the settings, so they can be relaxed, and then when you're both relaxed. You're definitely the vulnerability is coming out. Mm. And then you discover this other person in a whole different level, right? Like you truly see them at that point. And I, I really appreciate that aspect that you guys bring to the table, like just being able, or the picnic table, I should say. Sometimes one. we don't do picnic tables. Sometimes it's just like a relaxed, cozy setup. But the idea is that, oh, we're outdoors. We're experiencing something different, you know, and it's fun. It's, uh, there's no eyes that are watching us. Everyone is cool mm -hmm. and chill. And you get to just be yourself as a human. And for you as a business, like what area do you guys operate in as far as the city? Is there a specific area or like demographic or the whole geographic area. area? We do Ottawa. We do Gatineau. We go outside of Ottawa as well. We've had people tell us, let's go, let's move to Toronto and uh, do business there. But for me, I feel like I really want to stick to Ottawa because there's a need here. Mm -hmm. it, people say Ottawa is boring and it can be boring. But runaway picnic changes that, and because we keep on inventing. I'm things. glad they brought that up. That's kind of like the premise of my <laughs> show: is Ottawa is not boring. If it is boring, guess what? Check in with yourself. It can be boring. It's just how. What are you doing? Exactly. How like, are you what spending are you putting, your time? How How are you spending your day? What you're doing with your day? There's days sometimes where I'm like, holy crap, the day is done. Like, mm -hmm. because it's not boring. There's so much to do. You just have to put yourself out there. And then that's the idea is like most people don't put themselves out there. They just want to be entertained no matter what. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad that you brought this up. Tell me a little bit more about how you plan to change that and continue changing that. Well, with the picnics, it's fun, right? It's a novel thing. It's a novel idea. And like when I started Runaway Picnic, no one had picnics outdoors. You know, just a pic just a blanket and that's it. But now you go out, you see, oh, there's a nice cute setup over here. There's a romantic uh, proposal over there. And you start to see there's more interest in this yeah. kind of uh, activity, let's say. Have you ever had an event where like you plan something, people are watching it and then you're like, they come to you and be like, hey. All uh, the time. Yeah, tell all me more. The <laughs> it's actually sometimes stressful because like you want to focus on the job of setting up because you have <clears> so much time to do. Usually you have to set up within 30 minutes mm -hmm. right? because the food doesn't, you know, the food has to yeah. be fresh. The weather is cold or hot. You know, like there's so many areas that we have to think of and it's always stressful. And then people come and they're like, what is this? What's going on? What's the business? So you have to market the business, talk to them, do the setup, make sure that the client is aware of the location and is not lost. And uh, also make sure that when the client is coming, like, you tell everyone to just hide so that you can capture that surprise element. Yeah. So it gets to be very exciting, let's say. <laughs> Have you ever had a client or, you know, a guest that was freaking out or freaked out at the setup or not the setup, sorry, but like the, the way that the, you know, there's just a little too much going on kind of thing or? No, no. I actually had one guy, he did, he wanted to do a date. So they were not in a relationship or anything. He was trying to date her. 
And he came to me and he's like, Joanna, there's this special girl. Like, tell me more. He was in high, um, he was studying architecture. And he's like, I told this girl, if she goes out with me on another date, she's going to have the best date of her life. I'm like, okay. He's like, I want to surprise her. I want to create something really cool. And I'm a student, so I have this budget. The budget worked for the idea that we were having. So I did the surprise for her. And she comes. She, he, he convinces her. Like, he tells her, don't go for the weekend. Come here to Ottawa. Stay in Ottawa. And uh, on this day and time, just come to this location. So he comes with her. Brings her, like, a couple roses with her, like, in a, from a florist. And she walks. The whole park is gone. They're just the two people because it's late at night. And uh, the picnic is there. She's surprised. Wow. I leave them. And I come back after when I need to pick up. And he tells me for the first 30 minutes, she was quiet. I was freaking out because I thought she would have like a heart attack. And I'm like, what happened? And he told me she was just so surprised. She never expected this. Yeah. Because the thought that went into it. The thought. Yeah. And especially because guys don't date properly these days. Nope. They ha the woman does everything. I have some women who even contact me to surprise their boyfriends, to propose, to do everything because the guy doesn't do anything. I'm like, no, let them have some game. Yeah. There's something to be said about this whole, like, just masculine or negative masculine that we've been hearing a lot about. Yeah. And unfortunately, it's the common nowadays. It's unfortunate, but it is what it is. And just having that, you know, sense of like, okay, look, you're like, you could, you could take classes, you could you know, hire somebody to help you out with something like that. There is no reason for you to just be stuck in your own ways. There you go. There's no reason. This is why if you need help, just come to run away picnic. And that's Have how we ideas. help them. Yeah. yeah. You know, just book with us and then we take it from there. And then they think you did everything. Then Look at that. And they love it because they really think, oh, you actually did this. You planned the flowers. You picked this. Like all of the details. We ask about what does she like? Figure it out, you know. Um, if there's a specific color, if there's a specific scent, you know, like all of the tiny details that a girl would want a guy to like really care and know about so that he can surprise her because mm -hmm. girls are emotional. And even if a single thought is thought for her, she would appreciate that. Now, imagine you guys are not even in a relationship yet and he does this for you. She'd be like, oh my God, what's next? wait just wait <laughs> yeah i actually had the guy who did that surprise date night and he's like joanna now we have a problem like how can we beat this next time <laughs> i'm like don't worry really hi buddy <laughs> i'm like don't worry i got you like we'll we'll figure it out for you don't worry about it you know so obviously this came out of a very massive sort of need if you will right like that desire to just be out and enjoy the family and enjoy just the outdoors and all of that it's insane like that you know it's only been a couple of years and the business has taken off this much and this fast i really uh, i'm proud of you thank you, know, you. I'm, I'm, I'm sure your parents are also proud of you my uh, parents actually helped me too with the business oh, the whole wow. family so, uh, helps me with the business. so it's a full-on family business yeah, you can say so. I do have some people who help as well, like in terms of contractors. But yeah, like my, my dad likes to help with Runaway. Well, it gives him a purpose as well, too. It's yeah. just something fun to do. He's a romantic and uh, he comes with me, like he helps with the roses and all. He's like, Bob, you really like this. He's like, I do. I enjoy the whole details. It's fun, you know. It's, it's a creative yeah. outlet. It's, people love to just kind of be a part of something that's fun. And, and, and you know, like obviously bring that sort of emotions to other people like it's the most joy when you're helping someone else be joyous and, yes. and just having a lot of fun and I think from the sounds of it, it sounds like you found your love which is just kind of pouring your heart out in that in that business and then just kind of putting it out for people to enjoy and share that joy with, with everybody around them how has it been for you guys like a, as far as getting clients and, and just building the business uh, is it mostly word of mouth or like tell me a little bit more Honestly, it comes from everywhere. Usually it's word of mouth, but I've noticed a lot of uh, clients coming in from the internet. So like Google, Instagram, they see others who are doing it, then they get jealous and then they book a picnic as well. So it comes from like all over. We have news articles that talk about us. Mm -hmm. We've been on TV, radio, um, all of the platforms. So someone sees something, they'll just do it. I had a client yesterday 
same client that I was telling you about, he found about our business in our news article somewhere. That was like six months ago. And he had it in his mind that he'd contact me this week to book a picnic just to make sure that the date that he wants is not booked yet. And that was smart because his uh, date usually gets booked in fast like that. I'm like, Valentine's. there you go. <laughs> no, no, no. It was in June. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. June is like our busiest month. Well, of course, because yeah. it's outside. It's like when everybody summer, starts to come out. It's yeah. a perfect month. Yeah. Usually our summers are fully, fully booked and it's like hard to accept clients at some point. It's like so if I wanted to book something booked. in May, I should do it now. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, you could. Yeah. Sometimes we have availability. Really, it depends. Yeah. Because most of our business is on the weekends or special holidays. Sometimes we do weekdays as well. But uh, because we have limited days, so people book them quickly. And then you touched a little bit on the student. You know, you mentioned budget was a limited sort of thing. What sort of budgets people should expect? And I'm not asking you to give me numbers, but like just how do you work with budget? So you have to understand that you're coming to a luxury business. So we have luxury pricing. Mm -hmm. to reflect the quality that we're doing and the amount of work and the detail. There's a lot of hours that go into preparing one event. It's not just a simple five-minute setup. So before having a picnic, I have to have time to talk with the vendors, coordinate back and forth, see who's available, see with my team as well because, you know, you're hiring people to help you yeah. as well. So there's a lot of logistics that you have to plan. And then on the day of your event, you're setting up, you're bringing food. So, like, we have our starting packages on our website, but that's the starting. So anything from there goes up. So usually, I don't want to really say numbers because the numbers Nobody, change. I mean, nobody's going to hold you accountable yeah. because at the end of the day, it's, like you said, it's very specific to per event. Like, for example. Yeah, it's custom per your, your yeah. event. Give me an idea, for example, for that student that you, you did. What was kind of like a, just a ballpark? A ballpark, I think it was around 600, 700. It's reasonable for, yeah. you know, something that's very sort of romantic and putting your heart out in there. Like it, yeah. it makes sense. I think it's it's pretty reasonable, um, especially for what you're trying to accomplish out of it, which exactly. is, you know, just closeness, that sense of love, that sense of I care for you. Oh, it's really good. Yeah, and um, especially you're also getting like real stuff. It's not just, you know, like you're getting food, you're getting flowers. There's a lot of elements associated with it and setting up in a place that's not meant for you to set up. You know, you have to walk and hike. There's a lot of stuff to uh, to get that result. When it comes to planning something like this, how long is the planning process for you guys? It really depends on the event. So some events we could take a few months. For example, the 60 people picnic, we took two, three months to plan it. And it uh, depends on how difficult the client can be. So That's always the, yeah. Yeah, if the client is difficult, then yes, it's going to take more time. Because uh, thankfully, we don't have too many difficult clients. We try not to get those. I find the more you pay, the less difficult you are. That's true. Yes. Um, when we first started, I was accepting clients from, like, they had limited budgets. We would try to fit it in. But then I realized, you know, you're stretching yourself thin because you're not making money out of it. Because, you know, you have to yeah. pay the other vendors. And they're taking too much of your time. Like, in one day, they'd be calling you, messaging you for the, until the event. And it takes a toll on you because, you know, you have to set boundaries about Okay, you can't contact me all the time. This is not paid for. You want this, but you want to pay this amount. It doesn't work. Like, we're not a bargain business. We're a luxury business. So if you can't afford us, then we can't do business now. Until you, can, until like you have the idea of, like, what yeah, I can afford. Like, this. you're also not for everybody. At the end of the day, like, no. you have to be able to say, we're not a good fit. It's exactly. just not going to work out. And, like, every business should be able to decide, like, yeah, you and I can do business. We're a good fit. We're going to do it. Uh, or, no, you know what? Like, there is something here that's just, like, our personalities are not clicking or we're not the right business for you. Simple as that. Yeah. So, thank about you so qualification. Much. Yeah. You know, qualifying, qualifying, making sure. That's a big one, actually. Qualification. I really like that you mentioned that. A lot of the times people tend to, or businesses tend to qualify. Everyone is welcome. No. Great, but you have to be able to qualify out and say, we're not for you. And it's not just financials, but it's, you know, sometimes it's more, we're just not, like, we're not going to be able to deliver this idea. Or we're going to let you down if we're trying to deliver what you're looking for. So because of that, yeah. we're just going to opt out. No, it's fantastic. Really love you coming on the show. I appreciate it very much. And I wanted to invite the uh, you, actually, to tell the audience a little bit more about how they can get in touch with you and with your website and all of that stuff, if you don't mind. 
Absolutely. So for Runaway Picnic, you can check our website, runawaypicnic.com. We're also uh, available on Instagram at Runaway Picnic. Same thing on Facebook and TikTok. We also have a YouTube channel, but we're still going to work on that. <laughs> Runaway Picnic. That's it. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much, Jumana. I really uh, appreciate you coming and uh, the time that you spent with us here. And Thank you. Looking forward to seeing this amazing business. I definitely will have a few ideas for myself. So awesome. we'll keep that in mind. With that being said, guys, really appreciate it. If you like this show, please hit us up with the thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe and click that little bell icon so you can get more and more about these episodes and know about Ottawa and learn that Ottawa is not boring, as we mentioned. Yes. Yeah, it's a, it's a fantastic place to be if you know what you're doing and if you know who to contact and the right businesses that you can you know, ask to deliver that service for you. Thanks again. Really appreciate it. And see you next time.